Hi, I am Venkat. I am a principal data cloud architect here at Snowflake, working with the Polaris solution team. We develop various industrial demo assets, such as what you are going to see right now. Snowflake has recently partnered with SiriusLink to help develop a solution for MQTT and the, for develop a solution for all IoT messages that adopt MQTT spark plug specification. Sensors um, readings from various field devices are sent over and are managed typically by a SCADA system such as Ignition. Ignition can send out these messages back via through the MQTT transmission module to an MQTT broker to downstream application and with, uh, with Spark Plug B specification format. Sirius Link has developed the IoT bridge for solution which provides low code solution to take these devices and ingest into Snowflake and automatically build out and replicate the device and the table structures natively in Snowflake with literally zero coding effort to be done by the client. Here is a solution architecture. Data gets ingested from the IoT bridge into a staging table called Spark Plug Raw, and various data pipeline kicks in immediately following streams or serverless tasks. Using nbirth and dbirth messages, the site specific schemas and their specific machine views are automatically built. The real time data are sent over to Spark Plug Tree device messages, which are then viewed from these device specific views. Downstream, model training and inference model can be done and are also can be used to view the data using applications such as using Streamlit. Here is a sample view of a Streamlit application. Here we are seeing what is called a node machine registry. So this view reflects all the various different machines that is on a specific smart factory. We also built up a device view. So this lists out all the measurements for a device. Let's take an example of a device such as conveyor. As you can see, we get the readings for the conveyor across different factory lines in this smart factory. We are also able to see the various contextual information that was configured in the factory floor for this device, such as motor amps, or does it engineering high, or is its engineering unit. Let's take an example of another uh, measurement, like temperature. Temperature, it shows some value, but what does that mean? Is it degree Celsius, Kelvin, or degree Fahrenheit? In the field, on the ignition side, the template has been defined as degree Fahrenheit, and that's what comes from the node machine registry, and you can see that right now it is degree Fahrenheit. With that, this is the brief overview for the section related to the IoT bridge. It's an uh, adapter done in partnership with SiriusLink. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Kala Govindrajan. I'm a senior data cloud architect in the Polaris Industry Solutions at Snowflake. Now that Venkat has walked you through the data ingestion process via the Snowflake IoT bridge, you'll see how to build an anomaly detection solution in this demo, which leverages no park and other features. A key challenge in the manufacturing industry is unplanned equipment downtime, and manufacturers want to reduce the loss of production and other overhead cost by setting up a monitoring facility for all their factory sensors in order to reduce the production, loss of production, and other overhead cost occurring through this. So they want to collect IoT sensor data, detect outliers, process that, and turn them into digital insights and to take further preventive action. Let's now take a look at how to build an anomaly detection model that would consume the IoT sensor data, create the features, train and deploy, and using all using Snowpark within Snowflake. We will analyze the vibrational sensor readings sourced from a NASA acoustics and vibration database for this anomaly detection model. Our analysis will be based on a single data set consisting of readings taken at 10 minute intervals 
and each file is going to contain number 20,000 sensor data points. We are doing a multivariate time series analysis so across four different sensors. We are going to use our unsupervised approach for machine or for model training. A smart solution for anomaly detection should identify critical events and sensor attributes. And for this, we are using an unsupervised machine learning algorithm. Typically, this is similar to a deep learning model with all trained in an unsupervised fashion. So why do we need an unsupervised approach? It's because of the, given the number of data points in any real world uh, scenario where you have millions of tags coming in and the variety of the data in the multivariate time series. This is going to have high complexity and a definite rule based on supervised approach may not be effective and it will break with you. In multivariate time series, the outliers, which are nothing but pattern deviations, can occur in any single channel and also in a correlation of channels. So we'll be using an auto-encoder neural network, which is created within the long short-term memory recurrent neural network cells within the Keras TensorFlow framework. They are a special kind of recurrent neural networks which are capable of learning long-term dependencies. Let's move on to the anomaly detection training. We already have imported the packages, we have ingested the data, and then done some pre-processing. Now what I'm going to show you here is the training part. So once I click train model, what is going to happen in the background is there's going to be a, a stored procedure that we created to do the model training using Snowpark and Keras LSTM motor encoder. There are four readings or four sensors emitting data for tags and we'll be calculating the loss for each sensor. We'll also register the stored procedure so you could use that model, pickled model file for further inference in future. Once I registered this function as a stored procedure and calculated the model loss by each of the sensors, I can see the output here. What I can now do is analyze the distribution of the loss function. As you can see, the calculated loss in the training set is well below one and we can analyze or determine what is the threshold range. By setting this threshold, Anything above this noise level can be flagged as anomaly for, for uh, during our interest stage or you know, in the future. Once we have analyzed what is the loss, determine what is the threshold for each of the sensor, we will look at the inference page itself. I have created a vectorized UDF using a different function using the Python UDF batch API, Snowpark. This means that each call of the UDF receives a set of batch of loads compared to any scalar UDF, which will get only one input. Now, when I click run inference, what is going to happen is it's going to carry an inference on the test data that I'm giving in, and it's going to flag any data points that is above the threshold value that was set earlier. And as you can see, there are these are run with red vertical lines, and I can see the loss in as well. I also see the tabular data where all my different sensor readings are here. What is the threshold for each of the sensor readings? And what was my, uh, whether, whether it was an anomaly or not is being marked here. So this uh, summarizes the demonstration today. And I hope you enjoyed uh, watching and learned that more about StockMix. I will be streaming and the anomaly detection solution that we have. But thank you.